In order for us to have an abundant ethanol supply, we first have to have an abundant supply of corn that can go to ethanol production, which we have here in Nebraska. So our ethanol producers then have to be efficient and make sure their technology keeps improving so they can produce more ethanol with less water, less energy, and ultimately less corn. And then we have to have our end users. We have to have domestically vehicles that can use higher blends of ethanol, so blends above 10%, but we also need partners overseas. Nebraska is really a great place and it's located perfectly for both growing corn and producing ethanol. We have an Ogallala aquifer that lies underneath the state which brings us a natural water source that we can irrigate and then we have ethanol plants that are located right on rails that can take our product to the ocean in the west or to the gulf in the south. Those two things position Nebraska uniquely compared to other states. The life of a, a corn kernel in an ethanol plant lasts about 72 hours. Our process here at the plants begins with area farmers and elevators delivering that corn to our facility. There's some days we'll receive 200,000 bushels right here at the scale, and they check for moisture, for material damage, anything else that would hinder performance. Then it later rolls down into the dump pits where we dump it into a leg or a series of conveyors into our bins. We have two metal storage grain bins and a pair of concrete silos. That allows us to store about 20 days of our production usage on site. The first six hours, uh, we grind that corn into a flour and mix it with water, raise its temperature up to about 188 degrees, and that's where the enzymes start to break down the starch in the corn into sugars. After that, the product is moved on to uh, the large fermentation tanks that you see out here. We have six fermenters. They're all about 800,000 gallons in capacity. It ferments for about 60 hours, but we're watching lactics, acetic acid levels, glucose, watching to make sure it's fermenting correctly. Once fermentation is complete in 60 hours, it gets dropped to the beer well. The next step, just like making beer or whiskey or, or wine, is distillation. Towards the top of the column, we're getting 190 proof. From the 190, we gotta bring that to 200 proof. We'll later denaturant. That is a product that can be loaded out onto rail car. Our staff is constantly monitoring that 60-hour fermentation. We're grabbing samples and taking those samples back to the laboratory to do quality analysis. Our goal with every single batch is to have the perfect batch. In the United States, about 10% of the gasoline you use at the pump is made up of ethanol. When you contrast ethanol and gasoline or petroleum, one is a renewable resource and one isn't. So we're able to grow corn each year. We're able to take that corn, take it to an ethanol plant, turn it into ethanol, but also distiller's grains, which can then go to livestock feed. So there are a lot of products that come from the production of ethanol other than just ethanol. We're able to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by between 39 and 43% when we use ethanol compared to regular gasoline. So that's a big benefit just by visiting the pump and picking ethanol as compared to regular gasoline.